ourselves away to him, to worship him in spirit and in truth, and allow his spirit to reign within us.
apostolic and universal. Let us now reverently and sincerely declare what we believe by the use of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and dead, the, the third day he rose from the dead, he is sitting in the heaven and sitting on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the wicked and dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and life everlasting. Amen. 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 All right. I'm going to three, four, amen. <laughs> Thanksgiving and rejoicing 
in our hearts. We come, Lord, just thanking you, God, for a man, for God in the flesh, for your son called Jesus. For without him, none of this would be possible. Oh, Lord, as we come before you this morning, we thank you for bringing us back into the house of prayer one more time. And Lord God, we just want to take the time to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for preserving our lives, for allowing us to have a wonderful pastor and assistants that work with him so diligently, God, in these four years and eight months, God, to allow us to make it possible for us to re-enter into this sanctuary and worship you again. Oh God, Lord, we're trusting in you, Lord. We're leaning on you, God, every step of the way. Yes, Lord. And we know that you brought us very far mm -hmm. and that you will bring us even further. Mm -hmm. Oh God, we pray, Lord God, that you will bless this congregation and all those that enter into these doors. Mm -hmm. That their spiritual needs may be met, Lord. Mm -hmm. That they will have salvation and deliverance and healing, God. Oh, God, we pray, Lord, for this city, God, mm -hmm. that they might as well get ready, Lord. Mm -hmm. Because this beacon on the hill, the friendly church, mm -hmm. will shine through the glory of God once again. Yeah. Oh, God, we pray that you comfort everyone, Lord, under the sound of my voice. Yes, Those that couldn't make it, Lord, whose hearts are rejoicing mm -hmm. just as much as those who are present. Now, God, we pray, Lord God, that you will comfort, Lord, the grieving families, Lord. Oh, Lord, in this city, God. For, Lord, we know what happened on Ferguson Road last night. We pray that you will comfort those families, God. That you will comfort all the bereaving, Lord. Oh, God, and that your will will be done in such a time as this. Oh, God, bless our pastor. Bless his family. Bless the first lady, Sister Linda. Yes. Oh, God, we're excited now, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord. And we ask these and all other blessings that have been mentioned and unmentioned. You know, God, when you search the hearts and minds of men. Mm -hmm. But we ask in Jesus' name that you will answer our prayers and we'll continue to give you the glory.
by next week. And don't go in. You can peep in, but don't go in, okay? There are lots of stuff that are laying around, and we don't want anyone to trip and fall. But if you want to peep in, you can peep in, but don't go in, okay? Amen. You see, it's, it's almost ready. It's almost ready. But we are ready up here, and we thank God. Amen. Uh, my son, I'm going to give him away that he may say a word. He traveled all the way from Virginia to be with me. Amen. My spiritual son, Reverend Freeman. Good morning. Good morning. I pray that everyone is doing well. I did not want to miss this day. So I told the wife, I said, babe, I'm getting on the road. Whether it's four hours, six hours, seven hours, I want to make this today. I want to encourage you all just to continue to press forward. Okay, this is just the beginning, but just to continue to press forward. You're going to face some obstacles, you're going to face some storms, you're going to face some battles, but know that you're not standing by yourself. Amen? Know that you're not standing by yourself and know again, this is just, this is just the beginning. God is going to continue to expand, God is going to continue to grow, but God just wants you to continue to don't worry, it's all in God's hands. And I want to say this also as well. While we have the opportunity, let's make sure that we are pouring into our young people. Because we're living in a day and time where we don't know how the church is going to be. We don't know how the church is going to survive. But I encourage you now to start raising up these young people, these young adults. Because the way things look, we don't know. We don't know how tomorrow is going to be. So I encourage you, raise up these young people, instill in them prayer, give them the word, let them know exactly what it's all about. And you will see a difference, even in Fayetteville. It, it, it bothers my spirit that whenever I go on Facebook and I see another younger person there for no reason. Let's reach out and remember that the church is greater than four walls. Meet them where they are, and they will meet you right where you are. I love you. Continue to strive. Continue to push. Love you always. Amen. Very great. Uh, good words, amen. 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 I mean, just looking up there and seeing the Jackson and Jackie, Caleb and Sap, Juan. Come on, y'all. There's our future behind me. Amen. And those that are out there. But to God be the glory. Amen. At this time, Sister Brenda Freeman yes. is coming. Amen. Amen. scriptures coming from Matthew 25 verse 21 and it says well done thy good and faithful servant thou have been faithful over a few things I will make you ruler over many enter thou into the joy of the Lord so my little story is about Courtney and the king 
kid probably know about Horton, who hatches the egg. My daughter read it this morning and said, oh, I missed that one. <laughs> but let's talk about Horton. It's a wonderful story about an elephant named Horton. The story began with a lazy bird named Maisie sitting on an egg in a tree. Sitting on the egg was tiresome and boring, and Maisie hated it. I'd like to take a vacation, fly off and rest, if I could find someone to sit on my neck, Maisie said. Then when Horton walked by, Maisie asked Horton if he would sit on her neck while she took a little rest. Horton objected at first, but Maisie promised that she would not be gone long. So Horton finally agreed, and soon he was sitting on Maisie's neck as Maisie flew off to Florida for a vacation. In Florida, Maisie had such fun that she decided that she would never go back. Days turned into weeks, and weeks turned into months, and months, whew, but Evans turned into years. Four years and eight months, the pastor said. Winter came, and the ice hung on Horton's trunk and his feet, and he still remained faithful as he had promised Maisie. I'll stay on this egg, and I won't let it freeze, he said, as he sneezed. I meant what I said, and I said what I meant. An elephant is faithful, 100%. Ah, I see some nods out there. <laughs> now, I don't know if elephants are really faithful 100%, but I do know someone who is. God is faithful 100%. The Bible is full of promises that God made. God has always been faithful to keep his promise. We can, we can, we can and are faithful over many things. Here at Evans Metropolitan AME Zion Church, there are many faithful members. Let me talk about one of those faithful members for a moment, please. In September of 2018, Hurricane Florence came through and destroyed or damaged much of our lovely sanctuary. There were many people who worked faithfully with uh, lots of determination to get the church back ready for occupancy. And we're here this morning. This person was faithful 100% in getting the building repaired so we could come back home. Along with the members, Pastor Seven A. Lindo set out on a mission to restore the historic Evans Metropolitan Church. It, had, it has taken, as he, he told us, four years and eight months and so many days and so many hours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so we are here today. Pastor Lindo, come on down. Shannon, come on down, baby. The, ch the children's department would like to give you something to remember this day, the first day back after four years and eight months. you were, you would be there. We really love you, Pastor, for everything you do, and we thank God for giving us a pastor like you. And it is from the Evans Metropolitan Amy Zion Church Children's Department, May 23.
many promises to God. Let us remember that God is faithful to his promises to us. Let us pray. Dear Father, as we are faithful and keep, as you are faithful in keeping your promise to us, may we be faithful in keeping our promise to you. We thank you for the blessings of this house as we lift your name in praise. We thank you for blessing Evans Metropolitan AME Zion Church. Continue to watch over us as we do your work. This in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Struggle is real, but we got it done. Amen. First lady, would you like to say something? Quickly. It's good to be home. It's good to be home.
<laughs> you know, there's something good about it, okay? Because from now on, I'm looking at that seat. That seat is empty. <laughs> amen. So, amen to God and His Word. We are so thankful. Come, y'all, and uh, to lift the offering. And y'all know I'm learning, right? I'm learning as I go. Good morning. Look at your programs. What time is it? It's time. We are shutting down the blessing. So let's bless God. We're going to continue to do. Stuart, we need you on the floor. We're going to continue to do the offering as we have done. We're going to work it back in the old way eventually. But let us just comply. Make sure you annotate on your envelope what your giving is for, and we'll take care of it. Let us pray. Kind of Father, we come, most of all, God, just to say thank you. We thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you how you blessed us. Lord, we thank you how you kept us together as a church. And Lord, we thank you for the memory of all those who have passed and gone mm -hmm. since we were here last as a church. But Lord, we know that you never made a mistake and you never will. And we thank God for you. Lord, we ask that you to bless the hearts and the minds of the individuals seated, that they may go out and tell men and women that God is here in heaven. They need to come and join us. But Lord, we know that you're able to do this. We ask you to bless this offering we're about to receive. Help it to be nourishment, and Lord, to feed our souls that we will continue to do what we need to do for your kingdom. This is our prayer. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We are.
experiencing the great measures that our press found shaken together and uh, running over. At this time, amen, the Jackie Hill Sap Choir will come now to render the free message and song. Let us receive them with a hearty amen.
God be the glory for all that he has done. I don't know about you, but he has done more for me than I could ever be able to do. If the Lord has done something for you, why don't you just, just thank him. Just thank him. school at the age of three, not five, like it is in America. And I've got witnesses here. When you all think that 18 years old is the age that you can do your thing, in Jamaica, when you get 16 years old, you're considered as an adult. Amen. But it took a barefooted boy all the way from that little island and brought me to the United States. Set me in the service. 31 years in the military in three months, by the way. 28 plus years in ministry. Three pastoral charge to bring me to this moment in the historic church Amen. of the Amy Zion Church in the South. Don't you all know I'm happy? Yeah. Don't you all give God glory? For he is my rock and my salvation. And in him will I trust. But we're a little long today. Amen. I was already told we're starting late. We'll get it together after a while. <laughs> but amen. We'll get together after a while and we'll continue on. But it's just a blessing to be able to stand here. I don't even know if I want to preach. <laughs> I really don't. Because when I looked at this altar right here, you know, when I was assigned to this church on November 12th of 2018, the wife and I came the next day, and when we walked in here, there was only one pew sitting over there, no carpet on the floor, no ceiling in this building. It was moldy, and the insulation was dropping from the, from the rafters. <coughs> There was still wetness on the floor downstairs. All the duck in the Bessie Lewis was completely taken out. I came the next day and I knelt at the altar right there. 
wasn't thinking. But when I knelt, I knelt on the nail that was right there. And when I got up, yes, I was bleeding. But I said, Lord, if you bled, why can't I bleed? And I bled. And then now, today, to stand here, where I've asked the Lord, Lord, if it be, let me preach the first sermon in this church Amen. after four years and a half. John the 14th chapter in the 16th and the 17th verse. Y'all bear with me. Young folks, I know you want to run out and go do your thing. Old folks, you want to go home and sit in your recliner. Well, so do I. So I'll do my best to be as quick as I can in delivering this message. 14th chapter of John, in the 16th and 17th verse, in the words of Christ. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. God's words for God's people. Let me speak to you from this subject. The power within that sustains. The power within that sustains. It's all right. We'll figure it out after a while. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Most of us who uh, know computers, like even on the screen that you see today, pretty soon we're going to have live streaming up there. But on the computer, there is an icon called my computer. Have y'all seen that before? Most of us who have computers know that on the screen off your monitor is an icon or a picture that is entitled My Computer. If you click on this icon, it will soon open a file that reveals the content of everything you have saved on your computer. The same is true, my beloved, for all of God's children. Let me take my time. God has given us an inner source to help us and to let us know that all things that are saved in our life is in that particular icon. But no, let me say to you, God did not create within us a file that is called my computer. Young folks, y'all know about that, right? <laughs> Amen. But what we do know is that God has created a file within our life that is called a heart. Can I get an amen to that? He monitors this file. He creates in us through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit is the revealer of all contents of, of our lives. He is continually in the process of showing us ourselves exactly the way God uh, truly sees us. Amen. Whether this prophet, uh, process is to help us uh, grow or to mature, it may bring back through the chastisement or conviction of that heart. He is continually, God is continually in the process of showing us ourselves exactly the way that God sees us. 
And when you begin to search your heart, if you cannot find something good, maybe you need to get an antivirus. Whether this process is to help us grow and mature or to bring us back, we need the Holy Spirit. Are y'all with me right now? The Holy Spirit wants to help us represent Christ and to continue on with the ministry that Christ initiated until he returns for his church. How many of y'all know that Jesus is coming back? Amen. Well, any time you start acting like it, because he may come in the next moment, won't we? You know, we do this by making the gospel message of Jesus Christ relevant to every generation. With the Holy Spirit present in us, we can do just that. I, how many of y'all know that we can do all things through Christ and strengthen us? Amen. Are y'all with me right now? Amen. Oh, I'm going to preach after a little while. But there's three things I want to talk about today. And that is first, the Holy Spirit that is in us. Amen. See, many of y'all are, 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 are really acknowledging the fact that the Holy Spirit is in us. You see, when it is that we receive Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit came in us. He became indwelling within us. Uh, the question for us is where will you take the Holy Spirit with you along the way? But anyway, the Holy Spirit within us. Many times we have been used or uh, used to describe this third person of the Trinity called the Holy Ghost. Some call him the Holy Spirit. Some call him the Spirit of Truth. Some call him the Counselor. Some call him the Advocate. But nevertheless, he is the power of God that is in us. It is the power that makes you want to shout. It's the power that makes you say glory. It is the power that makes you shout hallelujah. Do I have a witness in here to know that the Spirit of God, when you move with it, you cannot sit still. In verse 16, Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit as a counselor which is the Greek noun for parakletos. In other words, he can also be called the paraclete. I didn't say parakeet, I said paraclete. Because many will think it's a, uh, a parakeet, if you will, because, you know, you fly from one place uh, to the other. You're unstable in all your way. But when the Holy Ghost is inside of you, don't you begin to work things out? Am I right about that? The paraclete, uh, the one who exalts. The one who comforts, the one who helps, the one who makes appeal on your behalf, the one who fills us with power and authority so we can do all things uh, through Christ who strengthens us. Am I right about that? Yeah. With the Spirit leading and guiding, we want to live victorious and fruitful lives, don't we? Lives that are filled with God's holy power, uh, a power that makes his people holy and righteous uh, in his sight. God's holy people can be powerful people. Did y'all hear me? God's people can be powerful people, but I stopped by to tell you, the power you have is not to do somebody else other than the way that you want to be done. Am I right about it? Church folk ought to get it right with God and begin to do right according to the word of God. Come on now, somebody. You ought to shout hallelujah. God's holy people can be very powerful people. Powerful not to themselves, not powerful according to the world's standard, but powerful because the power of God has been revealed in their lives. Uh, can I get an amen? amen? The Spirit of God is in this house right now. Yeah. Are y'all with me right now? And God knows if he can touch Sister Linda over here, he ought to jump over here and touch Donna Green. Uh, and if he touched Donna Green, he ought to jump right on over there and touch Brother Carver. And when you all get together, 
in the house of God. Now, you can send it up to the pulpit. The pastor and the preacher will get happy about it. And before you know it, uh, good God on my head, the Jackie Hill Sack Choir will begin to sing uh, and give God glory. This is revival time. Yes. Oh, Lord Jesus, amen. amen. You all know what revival is, right? Yes. Amen. We ain't got to wait for Monday night, Tuesday night, Thursday night, Wednesday night, Friday night, whatever night it is. It can happen right here today. Can I get it all? Uh, uh, and amen to that. Uh, can I get a hallelujah? For this is revival time. It's time for renewal. Amen. Look what God has done. You ought to give God thanks. Amen. It's time to rejuvenate. Time. Amen. Hallelujah. To revive your spirit. If we're going to win people for Christ, I heard somebody say something about amen. I think it was my dear uh, friend, amen, and son, Reverend Freeman, that says amen. There's a church that is outside. Are y'all with me right there? I thank God for my brother that is here today for he's taking on a word today. Amen. Hallelujah. I know you got your little pretty seats today, and I'm not talking about you today. You're sitting in a good seat, uh, but God knows when you get up from that seat, you ought to go outside and let somebody know that God is still on the throne. And Jesus Christ saved. Am I right about that? It's revival time. Uh, it's time that we allow ourselves to be open uh, to the mind blowing, uh, heart warming and life changing power of the almighty God. The power of God, if we will allow it, will invade our body. It will inflate our mind. It will swell our soul. It will lift our spirit and make us more, amen, than we ever were before. The power that can make you young again if you're old. Uh, power that can make you live uh, even if you die. Power and the uh, presence uh, of the Spirit that will, amen, be right there with you. Uh, you will not be disturbed. Uh, you will be delighted. Uh, you will be delivered. Uh, and more than all, you lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I wish the church uh, will lift up Christ. For if he be lifted up, he will draw all men unto him. Revival time. It's revival time. You ought to look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor! It's revival time. Amen. Hallelujah. God didn't give us this large sanctuary to sit here and warm our seats. Amen. Look up there. There are plenty more seats up there. It's time to reach out to the community and tell them, come hear a word from the Lord that will change your heart and change your mind. Come on, somebody. Lord, have mercy. Next, it can happen. It can happen. It has happened before. In the Old Testament, when God sent forth his spirit, chaos changed the chaos. I shall say the word of God changed, amen, the world uh, from chaos into a creation. Uh, the Red Sea opened up a highway to freedom. Uh, in the New Testament, when the spirit came, the earth, a young woman named uh, Mary gave birth to our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, and he was born, uh, and since he was born, we have never been the same, uh, mankind have turned around, uh, God can do it today, uh, all you need to do is let him in, uh, let him have his way, uh, can I get a witness out there, for somebody who want to shout right now, and tell God thank you, uh, for he's been for you to sit down on him. I thank God for the Spirit of God that is in this place. Are y'all with me right now? Uh, if you'll just allow the Lord uh, uh, and his Spirit to come up 
upon you, huh, we'll begin to see amazing things happen. Huh? Yeah. We can see barriers broken down. Huh? Yeah. We can see communities begin to transform. Yeah. Huh? We can see opposite begin yeah. to reconcile. Huh? Yeah. We'll see unity established. Huh? Yeah. Diseases can be cured. Huh? Yeah. Addictions can be broken. Yeah. Huh? Sins can be rewarded. Yeah. Huh? Good God Almighty. Yeah. Races can reconcile. Huh? Hope can be established. Huh? People can be blessed. Huh? Churches can get on fire. But when the Holy Ghost comes, you catch on fire. Can I get a witness? I don't know about you, but I'm glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. I'm going to give him praise. I'm going to shout hallelujah. For he is the God. Hallelujah. That's been right there. And I believe he will stay right there. Finally, the Spirit of God is still present with us today. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. He's moving in the church right now. Yes. Hallelujah. He's moving right now. Uh, what does that mean? It means we can still experience the real definition of what church ought to be. Y'all with me right now? Amen. Amen. Uh, if you're a little bit older than I am, I ain't gonna ask you to raise your hand. Amen. That's not for you, whether you want to do it or not. Amen. But y'all remember back in the olden days, amen, when folks used to run around and jump around and give God glory. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember that? Amen. I, I wonder if y'all could just stand up and pat your feet just a little bit for me. Come on now. Yeah. You got it in your spirit. Give God praise. Huh? Tell God thank you. Do it like you used to do it. For he is good. He's wonderful. He's a counselor. He's right here. Thank God for the Spirit of God.
against. Because it is revival time in the church. is coming again. Give God praise. Some of y'all sitting out there with that little quiet boy. I ain't never seen you like that. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Tommy, you ain't never seen me preach, have you? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God for the Holy Spirit. Thank when I sat down, amen, to put this sermon together, I thought about you all and what God has in store for you. But today, I need to have an invitation. It is only right that after this sermon has been preached, so I'm going to ask that you'll stand all over this church. I don't know where you are in your life. Only God knows it. Remember I told you. That icon that is put inside you called the Holy Spirit. Hmm? He sees everything and he knows everything. And he is also the antivirus that will eradicate your heart of that that isn't right. Hmm? Sometimes we say things out of context. Sometimes we do things out of context. Sometimes we are deliberate in the things that we do. The Bible tells us that we sin by omission and by commission. But today, I offer Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sins. Thank you, choir. Now, perhaps it is you gave your life to Jesus Christ many years ago, and that's a good thing. But sometimes we slip out of the straight and the narrow, and we need to return. Or perhaps it is you've never given your life to Jesus Christ. The altar, my dearly beloved, is open today. It is open. For the Lord is calling all sinners to come home. The altar is open. Will you come today? Would you come today? Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. Because I remember many years ago when I had to take that walk. It was a walk of determination that I wanted Jesus Christ to be my Lord. So today, I extend that invitation. And while you're standing, if there be one that would like to join the church, the doors of the church, are open. If it is your desire to come and to worship with us, we'll receive you. We'll receive you if you will come today. I will come today. I will be right there for you. I'd love to be your pastor.
and, and working diligently at the, uh, what is that, the, uh, what's that been on the lead? Planning division. Amen. City attorney. Rededication service is uh, is next week, 3 p.m. We'll have uh, communion on the first Sunday, and we definitely would like for you to uh, be here for uh, for the uh, communion service, and then at the hour of uh, 3 uh, p.m. we'll meet right here again. So we'll take a break and come back. Bishop Monroe will be here to rededicate the church. Okay. And we do want to uh, invite each and everyone, okay? All right. I will lead you in this area, if you will. Dedication of church essentials. Thank you. To those who would see through the uh, widows, the windows of assurance, 
the things which God holds in reservation for his people, which only enter the hearts of man uh, to conceive by, the spirit of him who reveals all things through his crucified son and the Holy Spirit, our witness, we come to dedicate. Let us pray. O most glorious God, whom the heavens of heavens cannot uh, contain, graciously accept the dedication of these hymnals and ushers badge to thy service, and grant that all who shall call them these here may worship thee in spirit and in truth, and uh, may in their lives show forth thy uh, praises through Jesus Christ, our Lord. With hearts overflowing with praise and seeking ways in which we may more acceptably worship Almighty God, our Father, we now dedicate and you will say after each the hymnals and the usher's badge. So we dedicate to him, our God, what is it? The to the glory of God, the Father Almighty, that we may more worthily worship him, we dedicate the to the glory of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, that uh, our joy in him may be found more worthy uh, compassion in music and even in songs we dedicate. <laughs> to the church universal, the bride of Jesus Christ and uh, its uh, mission in the world to comfort the sorrowing, to strengthen the weak, to cheer the, we uh, the weary, to uh, cure the souls which are sensory all uh, uh, through the act of worship and in, the, in his sanctuary by praise and prayer we dedicate. Amen. Lord, we are so thankful, O oh God, that you have, uh, Lord, allowed us the opportunity to consecrate these items. We ask, Lord, thy blessings upon them. That God, as we would sing from the hymnals, as Lord, we will be able to read from the hymnals. And God, as the ushers will wear these badges, let it be done to your glory and to your honor in Jesus' name. And let us all say amen. amen. God bless you all. Let's give them a hand. And pray for you. Son, God, the Holy Ghost, be with you and rest with you henceforth and forevermore. And the Church of God will sing together.
business tell 